When an innocent 13-year-old boy wandered into a part of a city that would be considered gang territory, he would be hunted down and left paralysed for exactly that. All he did was just walk on a specific road within a city he called home, but for that, he paid a price. Said city would be Birmingham, which lies in the heart of England, and as of December 2021, holds the title of the city with the highest rate of gun crime in all of England and Wales. But sadly, that figure isn't something new. Although Birmingham may have not held that statistic year in, year out, over the span of many years, it's garnered the nickname Gun Capital of England, and it isn't hard to see why that is. Some of you may be familiar with the ongoing gang conflicts within the capital due to headlines and the rise of drill music. But to say that Birmingham's gang conflicts aren't as much of a problem as it is in London would be an understatement. For context, one of the main disputes in Birmingham is the rivalry between the Burger Boys and the Johnson crew. I won't deep dive into their origins in this video, but it should be noted that nowadays both gangs have younger offshoot sets that continue to carry the gang torch for the wider organisations. One of the most prominent sets would be an offshoot gang of the Burger Boys known as AR. They hit headlines back in 2016 after one of their members, Rayal Phillips, more known by his rap name Lynch, was tied to several shootings across Birmingham in 2015, and went on to reference some of those shootings in a song known as M to the N. With the violence being fueled by a younger, more antagonistic brand of gang member baiting his rivals with provocative rap lyrics, it was only a matter of time before he was flagged up on a police radar. He was eventually arrested and charged in connection with six shootings, and would go to be sentenced to 27 years in prison in 2016. Just under a year later, however, that sentence was slashed to 20 years, with the appeal judge saying the original sentence went altogether too far, as he, Rayal, had previously only ever been in custody once and had one minor previous conviction for a public order offence. News headlines in relation to AR would die down after Rayal's appeal hearing. Of course, this isn't to say other incidents didn't happen, but if they did, police weren't able to connect anyone to any specific crimes. That was until 2021, when three AR members had bumped into members from a Johnson's crew offset known as GSA. When COVID lockdown restrictions were easing in August of 2021, Ishai Gray, Theo White and Shane Campbell decided they'd take a trip to the Lavana Bar in Birmingham's Arcadian. Just after midnight, the trio spotted UK rapper Stardom linked to the rival set and one of them threw a bottle at him. When GSA realised that AR were in the building, a brawl spilled out into the car park. Stardom had been close to getting stabbed, but Shane Campbell had slipped forcing him to miss. It's also believed a gun was pulled, but no shots were fired. In the end, six men would go on to be sentenced for their role in the brawl, including the three AR members and stardom. Apart from this incident, AR would stay out of national headlines, although were making noise within the UK drill scene, like they had been in the years leading up to this point. But it was once again rap lyrics that would be at the centre of another trial, six years on from when Rayal Phillips had been jailed. On November 18th, 2021, an unnamed 13-year-old boy had arranged to meet some friends after school. When the group congregated, they decided they wanted to go and grab some Jamaican food and knew of a place in the Hockley area of Birmingham, so the group got onto a bus and made their way. When they arrived near to the shop, one of the group had spotted a silver bike in the distance and took an interest in it, so the group walked towards the bike. As his friend picked up the bike, a Nissan car pulled up with five AR members inside, including 17-year-old Tafik Thomas, 20-year-old Zidane Edwards, and 20-year-old Diego Anderson. According to the 13-year-old, he would later tell police that the Nissan pulled up. His friend began to argue with the AR members, but he walked off as instinct kicked in. I'm not stupid. I didn't want to get involved, he said. The 13-year-old made his way across the road and walked down into the underpass that lies underneath the Hockley flyover. The friend that had been arguing soon caught up, but had ran past, shouting, Gun! Everyone then began to run, but the AR members were close by. As the 13-year-old attempted to make his way up a grass verge and out of sight, Tafik Thomas, armed with a slam gun, shot in the direction of the group of young teens, and the 13-year-old boy was hit in the back. I took three big steps, like drunk steps. 
steps. I got halfway up the grass and I'd been shot. Something gave me that extra push. I saw my hand which was covered in blood. I was in agony, a lot of pain. I'm not dying like this, that's what I said. I tried to move my legs but I couldn't move them. I tried to scream for help but nobody heard me. I just tried to keep myself calm. I was scared until I realised two people came over. Emergency services quickly rushed to the aid of the 13 year old boy. Luckily their efforts proved fruitful and he survived the ordeal. But after being shot in his spinal cord, he would sadly go on to be pronounced paralyzed. Reports claim that he's paraplegic. So an investigation was opened by detectives and the hunt for the AR members was on. CCTV would capture the moments all five AR members fled the scene after they believed they had just murdered a 13-year-old boy in cold blood. They made their way back to the Nissan car in question and drove off from the scene. However, the car was still being used by some of the gang in the days that followed. Four days after the shooting on the 22nd of November 2021, the vehicle was eventually abandoned by the occupants. Police say that the occupants had a suspicion they were being tracked by police at this point. Their suspicions were right. Police had been tracking the car via AMPR cameras across Birmingham. And when all five occupants left the car, officers were on the hunt for them. Sedan Edwards and an associate had walked to a nearby petrol station where they asked the employee to call a taxi, which proved successful. They were both dropped home. For Tafik and Diego, however, they were soon spotted by police. Stay there, lads. Arm police, hands. Take your hands out of your pockets. Four, seven, three miles stopped at the moment. One wearing rubber gloves. The police investigation had already been well underway at this point, but a mountain of evidence was about to emerge after AR members left a trail for police. Within the Nissan, DNA and fingerprint evidence linked both Zidane and Tafik. Phones also collected by police as evidence had also been connected to the entertainment system in the Nissan. More mobile phone data had been used against the group as Diego had left his phone on at the time of the shooting and after the fact. So police pinpointed his phone to locations that were key to the investigation. He'd also made a phone call just moments before the shooting took place. When he was arrested, he had also been wearing the same jacket that had been worn at the time of the shooting. When Tafik had been arrested by police, officers conducted a search at his home address. When they searched the rear garden, they noticed a shed with a chicken wire fence. Here, they recovered some items, including pieces of piping and a shotgun cartridge in its top. Further searches of the garden resulted in the officer finding a nine millimeter handgun in a blue bag. On the 23rd of November 2021, police say Zidane, known by his rap alias Cooley18, had made a drum music video referencing the shooting. That clip hasn't been made for public use, nor is it anywhere on the internet, more than likely due to its incriminating nature. But we do have a transcript of the lyric in question. Hands on my head, now I'm fucking stressed. When I heard my man ain't in a casket. Who's that let me out? I'll blast him. Get him on the floor and stab him. Stab him. Don't stop giving him stabbings. Although it should be noted that it wasn't Zidane who pulled the trigger, police say it was Tafik. All three would go on to be charged with attempted murder causing grievous bodily harm with intent and possessing a firearm with intent. Tafik would also be hit with possessing a prohibited firearm. All three would go on to deny the charges that were brought against them, but were found guilty on just the attempted murder charge. Tafik was also found guilty of possessing a prohibited firearm. Tafik, the shooter, was jailed to life with the minimum term of 16 years and eight months. Sedan, Cooley 18, was sentenced to life with the minimum term of 17 years, whilst Diego Anderson was sentenced to life with the minimum term of 18 years. We'll never really know why the AR members did what they did on that day. And although it may seem as if the bike could have been the catalyst to the shooting, according to reports, that wasn't necessarily the case. The judge boiled it down to either the boys being mistaken for rival gang members, or they had just simply been in gang territory and AR in the heat of the moment struck out. Whatever the case, an innocent 13 year old boy who wasn't a gang member has been left paralyzed after the attack. And there's no valid reason why that should ever happen. Well, police cordons are pretty much everywhere I look at the moment, and a whole section of Hockley Circus has just been completely taped off with a lot of police activity around the entrances and exits to a couple of underpasses here, as you can probably see behind me. Well, the fact this is a 13-year-old boy has just completely shot the community. 
So much, in fact, that one mum uh, told me earlier that she's not going to be sending her kid into school today because she's just far too frightened. Obviously, fresh in their minds will be the fatal shooting of 15-year-old Keon Lincoln in the city earlier this year and also the fatal stabbing of 14-year-old D. John Reed just a few months ago. So really awful stuff here at the moment. Well, as you can probably see and hear behind me as well, it's a really busy area, so officers are urgently asking any witnesses to come forward, as well as drivers with potentially dash cam footage.